What's up, Stack family? Told you we was coming back with another. We got NBA legends and players share their greatest Larry Bird and Magic Johnson stories. This is a live reaction. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that sub button, and comment below. Let's get it. Already know how I go is live and legendary. Shout out to Big Bird, shout out to Magic, and we thank you, Lord, for another day. Now I promise you, now it's big every day. We enjoy it every day. You know we fired up for it. Shout out to them real legends. Y'all already know we ain't done with them nineties. We ain't done with them eighties. We ain't done with them seventies. We ain't done with them sixties. We definitely not done with them fifties. We definitely not done with them forties. When they start, Nate Smith, forty six. Legendary round here. Shout out to y'all out there. Hope y'all having a good day now. For real. Y'all already know. We don't do no faking around here. Make sure you be in the real you. Let's get down to a big bird and magic. Goodbye. She's gone. Y'all know what time it is. We early with it. We're going to get it started early. We ain't going to hold y'all up for nothing. It's your time. I'm ready. I'm just as ready. It's y'all ready. You feel me? Let's get down to it now. Real legend now. We thank you, Lord, for another one, I promise you. You know what? When all he does wins gold titles, he never wins championships. So that was my chance to get in the category of Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. Fast and furious. Magic was the tires on the car. Larry was the engine. I want you to know something. There's only one man that can guard me, and that's God. Now, now think about that for a second. Strange moment. I'm like, real legend. Damn, I ain't doing that. <laughs> Big Bird was cold for real though. This shit ain't even funny. Me at the top of the key, and he's walking me underneath this basket. He goes, "Cook, I'm ready to wear your ass out." What? Matty Johnson and Larry Bird. <laughs> What he One tell Cooper? Most important figures in NBA history. <laughs> As Charles Barkley said, Magic Johnson and Larry Bird are two of the most critical figures in basketball history. They revolutionized the game and left a mark that will never be forgotten. Magic Johnson brought a unique energy to the NBA. His core vision, contagious smile, and versatile skills set him apart. His style of play, whether it was a no-look pass, an assist behind the back, or a fast break, was truly one of a kind. Rambus. On the other hand, Larry Bird was a cold killer on the court. A was perfect he? blend of toughness, skill, and an unyielding desire to win. His amazing basketball IQ, talent for making clutch shots, and intense rivalry with Magic set him apart. Their unique qualities continue to influence the game today. We In a special collection, I've gathered some of the most compelling Showtime. stories from NBA legends who played with and against Magic and Larry. You will hear from Hall of Famers, teammates, and rivals that recount their most memorable encounters, the intensity of their battles, and the sheer intelligence that define these two legends. So here are NBA legends Legends and players sharing the greatest Larry Bird and Magic Johnson stories. Enjoy the video, man. You was on the court when Doc and Larry got into it. What caused that? Man, first of all, I, I hate the NBA for that reason. They owe me $5,000. I'm still pissed to this day. Because the one thing I would never do right. is hold a guy for another guy to hit him. And I've been mad. I'm still mad to this day. Y'all owe me $5,000, Adam Silver. <laughs> so... Larry Bird was a great trash talker. And he's like, Charles, y'all better get this old man off me. <laughs> I'm telling you. And he's just roasting Doc. Yeah. He's like, and this was Doc last year, I think. He was right there. It was either last year or the year before. And he's killing Doc. <laughs> and he's like, Chuck, I'm telling you for the last time, you better get over here because I'm going to kill this old man. <laughs> and he, it goes on. Up and down, and he Larry just killing him, and Doc had just had enough, and I just had to. We they come together, and I just kind of grabbed Larry. I'm not even looking at Doc. <laughs> yeah. When I went back and looked at the tape, Doc was nailing his. Ass. 
I was just trying to pull guys apart. Yeah, but you know you can't have a fight. You can't grab one unless somebody grab you. Hey, hey you grab him. I grab, grab him. Larry because I didn't want him hitting Doc. But ain't nobody grabbed Doc. I know. <laughs> I know. But but you just said something. If I grab Doc and Larry start pummeling, I ain't. I can't go back to Philly. You're right. I can't go back to Philly. So I grabbed Larry to stop him from hitting Doc, and Doc wailing away. <laughs> but Doc, it started because Doc was like, Larry's like, yo, man, y'all better get, and he's screaming it too, everybody can hear. Wow, that torture shit. Get this old man off me, I'm gonna kill him out here. Plan. <laughs> three point story of all time was my first time I ever competed. And of course, you know, I don't know how they do it now, but they bring you in a locker room, you know, you're all sitting there, you know, kind of talking with one another, waiting for him to call you to go out. Uh -huh. And uh, Larry Bird was in the contest my first year, and uh, everybody was in the room, but Larry wasn't there. And the guys were kind of saying, anybody seen Larry? You know, whatever. And all of a sudden, you know, right before we're supposed to go out, the door opens and Larry sticks his head in. And he says, oh, hey, guys, this must be the room for second place. So, uh, Damn. Yeah. But, uh, so that was my first experience with that. And I was like, <laughs> of course, the, he went out and won it that year. So... So you gotta have a little bit of confidence in yourself too going in. So then he went out there and won this year. Oh my goodness! <laughs> what thing, crazy. One thing you got to give Larry Bird. He could be red hot or ice cold. He never stopped talking trash. Ever. <laughs> Ever. Ever. I got one. Too. I got a he, he uh great story. Man, the Phoenix Sun, and that's the main man. Tom Chambers. And Chambers was guarding, was guarding Larry. Larry Bird was on the Timberwolves. Watch how he comes up on the other side. Two-handed. Good move. And so in the jump ball circle, Larry walked through myself and, and uh, Chambers, and then came back and told Chambers, I know you guarding me, and I want you to know something. There's only one man that can guard me, and that's God. <laughs> now, now think about that for a second. Think about the confidence and the arrogance it takes to make that statement. <laughs> think about that for a second. Hey, Rob, let me ask you this, man. Uh, there's a story going around where Casey Jones was drawing up a play and you guys were all in the huddle, and I guess he was having a hard time saying it. Larry told him, hey, give me the ball, and the rest of you guys get the hell out of the way. <laughs> Is that true? Like, the, the story behind that, Kevin was the one that had the hot hand. But as we all know, Larry's the man, and that's Larry's team. So Larry should take the first shot. But KC was torn between drawing up something for Kevin because he had the hot hand and not offending Larry. So Larry just took the F over. Quick. This was when, when we talking about the UCLA pickup runs. So this is when Magic was retired, and Matt played up there in college. Uh, Matt, Magic used to come up there with his own team. He bring his own five, <laughs> a bunch of old dudes. He retired. I'm a young dude in the league. I'm a rookie. Yeah. So he never, I never seen him lose a game in the pickup runs. And this is Magic about ten years retired already. Yeah. So he come, I'm guarding him in the post. The game is tied up, 6-6, six, six, we going to seven. I'm like, all right, I got Magic. Magic go up, shoot the hook, I challenge the shot. He missed the hook. We get the rebound, throw it ahead, we score. Game over. Magic looked down like, no, nah, no, nah, that don't count. That's a foul. <laughs> I didn't even touch him. He put the ball in, he get the ball back in the post, shoot the hook, and win the game. Right. Ain't no way you can be magic. Uh, no. They both they both made guys better. They yes. both made both made their teammates better. They both cared about nothing but winning. You know, they didn't care about individual stats and MVP trophies and none of that stuff. They cared about winning. Uh they both had incredible, you know, basketball IQs. Uh, they both were unbelievable on the court as far as seeing the game and making passes that you just didn't see. You know, neither one could jump very high. You know, I mean, yeah. those, those are probably the similarities. I mean, they both were 6'9", but they were both the ultimate competitors, yeah. you know. And uh, 
You know, Larry did a little bit more shit talking than, than Magic. Magic would talk only when you, you know, really got up into him and started messing with him. Then he would be like, oh, okay. You know, yeah. but Larry was talking from the beginning of the game to the end of the game. He didn't care. But I, I think those similarities is the reason why those two guys were so competitive. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it started in college. You know, in his, Indiana State against Michigan State in the most viewed, televised NCAA game in history. You know, watch these two guys go at it, and then that kind of carried over into the NBA. His energy is real high. He feels like he's in an opportunity to prove himself. And showcase that, hey, look, I'm still Magic Johnson. We, I still dominate this game. As much as it was five on five, we could see in Monte Carlo that it was gravitating towards, okay, Michael and Magic. I'll never forget everything just started to win in slow motion. Jess Kersey is standing there. I'm looking at him and we froze, we celebrating. And Jess Kersey starts to count because he's standing there and he, he has the one count. So I run over, we, we look at the bench, no timeout, nothing. So I run over and I grab the ball and this is probably one of the most incredible plays that's ever happened against me and that probably I've ever witnessed from an athletic standpoint, two people being in sync and just bird, just playing every second. And that's what the Celtics taught us to play every second, not to play 47 and a half minutes, mm -hmm. but to play a full 48. So I grabbed the ball from the referee, Lambeer's good foul shooter. I never had taken the ball out. That wasn't my thing, right? I, I, I threw it up, Bird sneaks in. I didn't even see him. But the thing I remember the most is that joker. This is the out of bounds line. <laughs> that joker caught the ball and in my mind, I'm like, okay, he going out of bounds. That dude did this like a ballerina, right? And if you go back and you watch the play, that dude is on his toes. The, the, the baseline is right up under his toes. And in my mind, he must have stood there for about five seconds. Because every, <laughs> everything was going in slow motion in my mind, right? And, then, and it's like, I'm like, and then it's, it's, it's just a strange moment. I'm like, damn, how are you doing that? <laughs> <laughs> Showtime was born when he arrived. Personality, off the skip, energetic, 24-7. Oh, 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 I always say that if I had to pick a team, he's my first pick because I know he's going to make whoever else I pick way better than they than they are. When you walk out of the locker room, here's this guy that's like, you know, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's get it on, let's do this, let's do this, let's do that. So all of a sudden you got this college atmosphere with the Lakers because Magic brought all of that fear. He came in, man, he's pushing that ball up the floor, and we were like, we gotta run. <laughs> and if you didn't look up, and he was like, look up, Wood, like, hey! And the ball was right there. When I went to the Great Western Forum, then watch Magic come down and do his thing, you know, and orchestrate his team and make them understand this way, this, this we gonna run this. And I mean, I was in awe, you know, and, and Don Nelson, he had called a timeout, had to take me out the game because he's like, I hope you're not going off and watching him and not really playing. I wanted to tell him, yeah, I'm, <laughs> I mean, I need to sit down for a minute because wow, it took me a half just to realize yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm playing against Magic. Remember one time coming into the, the huddle and I played against Magic a number of times and, and Dennis Johnson always uh, defended Irving and walked up to me and goes, man, is that guy strong or what? <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I know he's, he don't look very strong, but he's pretty strong. And he goes, Jesus, some of the things that he does out here, he says, there's no way I can stop him. He said, don't you ever tell him. <laughs> it was funny, this with Larry Bird. When I think we're in a car together. I'm posting him up, and he's laughing, and he's he was telling me something. He's like, 
Because you started that shit. Kiss your mama and then we planned. You started that they night. Boo- hey, I listen, didn't they start bo- that shit to them. They, the hey, they were party. booing me in Hartford. I'm like, well, mother, stop. Play. I'm from here. As <laughs> soon, soon as that shit started, I said, man, I hate Boston. And I ain't like, I was rooting for the Knicks all the time. <laughs> I don't know if you remember this game, Larry, but we played in Hartford. It was an exhibition game. We went up one. And and we walk out on the court, and Benson is guarding Larry, right? And Larry looks at me, and he go, he was calling me cheesy. He go, cheesy like you, you putting him on me? <laughs> you you putting him on me? I'm like, I'm like, that's all I got, man. That's all I got right now. And he go, I'm taking it right down to the baseline. I'm shooting right over him. So after the game, our buses were lined up next to each other, right? And Larry goes, hey, man, don't, don't ever put that guy on me. <laughs> right? So the next year, coming back, right, we playing at Hartford again. And I, I said, Larry, I got something for your ass. Nah, he said, who? I said, rob me. <laughs> I, said, I said, I got somebody for you now. And, and I'm listening to a game. It was New Mexico State playing Indiana State. I don't really care about the game, but I... New Mexico State is right up the streets from El Paso, and I went to UCAT, <laughs> and we're big rivalries. So I'm hoping that Indiana State will beat New Mexico State. And I'm listening to the radio, and I have no clue of the players on either team. All of a sudden, his name keeps coming. Bird. He goes to the right. Bird. He makes this right. Bird. I said, God damn, who is Bird? Good to have it up, Bird. You know, here's Bird. And Bird this and, and Bird just, oh, did you see the pass that Bird made? I can't see it, but I'm just trying to imagine it. <laughs> and I, I, when the time I got to the end, I said, damn, that brother can play. <laughs> hey, I'm going to tell you something. When I got the newspaper, the next morning and saw Larry's picture, I said, damn. <laughs> Woo. Larry, it wasn't you, you, you know, be honest with you. The young lady that said you were her favorite player, mine too. I love you too, Magic, but not as much as I like birds. <laughs> First of all, we got to Boston that night. Ex- and he had this. He had some knee. He had some knee pain, and I was like, "It's a hell of a time for you to come up with knee pain." <laughs> <laughs> he, I ain't going tonight. You got yeah, to see that. Yeah, they like, all right. I look at the boy. All right, so I kept like, all right. I'm like, so you know, I look at the mirror. I'm like, well, shit, bro. I'm about to get this motherfucker with the tits out here tonight. So I was before the game. I was over there rubbing my hands, looking at him like, like what year was this for you? This was my first year. Oh, okay. And um, that day, they came out with a, that morning they came out with a USA, USA Today article that said that Larry didn't have it no more. Whoa. So he came out that night to make a statement, and I was just the prime candidate. Yeah. yeah. Before the game, he told me, he was like, he, he just shook his head at me. He said, man. It's going to be a long one. Like <laughs> <laughs> so what did he put up? <laughs> I think he gave me, what he gave me? He gave me 40, 46 of three. What'd you do? Well, I haven't found out, but I was on his ass. I'm going to tell, tell you all this, man. I'm going to tell you this, man. I was on, he was actually calling out bank shots. He was saying, oh, next time, uh, bank shot left side. I'm going to pump fake you. Your dumb ass going to go for it. Gonna, he would tell you that, and it happened. And I said, I said, first of all, I'm gonna be so close to you if you if you shoot the ball next to I'm gonna try to rip your fucking arm off. That's right. <laughs> and what you think he did, man? I, I quit pump fake dog and he go for that shit here. Ah got you. Man, come on, man. Come Larry was How cold was I don't think I, I But I guarded his ass so tough. Three I guarded his ass so <laughs> tough that after the game, he came he, he sent the little letter over there to me. I was like, he was like, I've had nobody play defense that hard on me. Mm-hmm. I love it. He, I appreciate you playing out here. He was like, I got a little all-star game. 
why don't you come work out with me, come to the All-Star game, man. That's dope. Let me say that. That's something I was like, shit, that meant everything to me. Yeah, that's, so that's you guys became a friends after that, to this man, day? Went, absolutely. So it went from him whooping my ass right. to him teaching me a few things. I, so I, I, I surely appreciate yeah, that's it. That's, that's, that's the old NBA. That's how it used yeah, to be. That's how it's supposed to be. You know, Larry never really talked to me. But one particular, in the 85, you know, the 84 series, <clears throat> we're playing in, in the, in the uh, forum. And this particular play down, it was a timeout, and they were coming down, and Larry gets me at the top of the key, and he's walking me underneath his basket. He goes, Coop, I'm ready to wear your ass out. What? Okay, I get down to my best defensive stance. He goes down the lane, he comes off the left side, and Robert Parrish sets a pick. Great picker. Great picker. Comes off, and we knew the play. We knew what was coming up, and Kareem was ready. And as Larry comes off the pick, shoulder to shoulder with Parrish, and I'm tank trailing behind him, he catches the basketball right about the elbow. And he gets the ball and he goes up, and Kareem stops him from turning the corner. Larry catches the ball, he goes up in the air, and here I come. And I'm like, I'm getting ready to smash this shit, man. So I jump up, and I got my hand, and I don't know how Larry got this ball between Kareem and I. Because both Kareem had his hands up. I'm coming with my right hand. Because, and he had a great pass. I, I, like I said, I don't know how he got it to him. He hits Robert Parrish for a roll to the basket Robert Duncan. And Larry looks over his shoulder at me and he laughs. He said, I told you, motherfucker. And <laughs> that right there, uh, that, that shows you the essence and who this guy was. He was about team. He was about winning. He was about making plays. I spent the last couple of days with Magic Johnson shooting the Capital One commercials. And I, every time I see him, I tell him, thank you. Because Magic Johnson and Larry Bird are the two most important figures in NBA history. I agree. Well, people don't understand, to answer your question, people look at this thing now where guys are making 30, 40, $50 million. When I came in, it was uh, David Stern's first year. The average salary was two hundred thousand mm. dollars. Magic and Bird, those guys changed the entire trajectory of the NBA and made it what it is today. Because Magic and I, I told him this story. I says, and I'm playing with Dr. J. And Moses. Mm. I remember the first time Magic when he made a million dollars. We were going around high fiving each other. We couldn't believe an NBA player made a million dollars. Uh, that was magic. He was the first player to make a million dollars. What year was that? It was 85, 86, somewhere in there. But he sounded like it was like a 20 years. 25 year. years, 25 million. We, a million a year. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And we, like, me and Doc and Moses, like, right. I'm not talking about regular guys on the mm-hmm. team. I'm talking like, they had never made a million dollars before. Mm-hmm. Everybody was telling me that magic scored so many points over me. But you go back, you look at the film, and you'll see who was God. It certainly wasn't me because I doubt if he'd have been able to get his arm up to shoot a foul shot after the first 30 on me. You see this play happen. I'm standing there. I see the ball ricochet off. I'm about to go grab it. So I really could have messed up one of the best plays where is our back ever saw. Now for a guy who can't jump and not supposed to be able to run that fast, he sure can get a lot done. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and let me know what is your favorite magic or bird story. So make sure you like, share, subscribe, and until next time. Legendary.